Democrats in the House of Representatives are passing a series of measures tonight to toughen gun laws. That would include raising the minimum age to 21 to buy most semi-automatic rifles and banning high-capacity magazines. But the House bill is not expected to pass in the Senate, where lawmakers are working on a narrower bill. Before those votes this evening, much of this day's focus was on personal testimonies given on Capitol Hill. William Brangham reports. I don't know what to do. As negotiations on gun legislation continued on Capitol Hill, lawmakers on the House Oversight world, Committee heard wrenching once, testimony twice, from those affected by recent those. mass shootings. Mia Cerillo, so a fourth grader who survived the shooting at Robb point. Elementary in Uvalde, recalled well, the horror she back. witnessed so via recorded video. He shot my friend that was next to me, and I thought he was going to come back to the room. So I grabbed the blood and I put it all over me. Do you feel safe at school? Why not? Because I don't want it to happen again. And you think it's going to happen again? Emotional testimony came from families in other communities who have lost loved ones, all with one common theme, ending the violence. Zanetta Everhart's son survived being shot during last month's racially motivated massacre at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York. To the lawmakers who feel that we do not need stricter gun laws, let me paint a picture for you. My son, Zaire, has a hole in the right side of his neck, two on his back, and another on his left leg, caused by an exploding bullet from an AR-15. As I clean his wounds, I can feel pieces of that bullet in his back. Shrapnel will be left inside of his body for the rest of his life. Now I want you to picture that exact scenario for one of your children. This should not be your story or mine. As an elected official, it is your duty to draft legislation that protects Zaire and all of the children and citizens in this country. She was right. Uvalde parents she Kimberly and Felix Rubio remembered their final morning Spur, with their daughter Lexi. They too Avery. pleaded for a change in gun laws. Today we stand for Lexi and as her voice we demand action. We seek a ban on assault rifles and high capacity magazines. We understand that for some reason to some people to people with money, to people who fund political campaigns, that guns are more important than children. So at this moment, we ask for progress. We seek to raise the age to purchase these weapons from 18 to 21 years of age. We seek red flag laws, stronger background checks. We also want to repeal gun manufacturers' liability immunity. Though all family members today echoed similar pain and anger, not all wanted Congress to restrict access to guns. Lucretia Hughes, whose son was killed in a shooting, was a witness brought by Republicans. A convicted felon killed my son with an illegally obtained gun. Our gun control lobbyists and politicians claim that their policies will save lives and reduce violence. Well, those policies did not save my son. 10 more laws, 20 more laws, a thousand more won't make what has already illegal more wrong or stop criminals from committing these crimes. And y'all are delusional if you think it's gonna keep us safe. Thoughts and prayers and calls for more gun control isn't enough. How about letting me defend myself from evil? Republicans cautioned against any laws that would impact law-abiding gun owners. While every loss of life is a tragedy, no one should weaponize or politicize the abhorrent acts to punish law-abiding citizens. If we allow emotion to drive our actions, actions that have constitutional, constitution-altering consequences, we will destroy the very foundation of our country and break faith with those who gave everything that we would be free. Why are the House Democrats doing this? And Congressman Richard Hudson of North Carolina lashed out at Democrats for even holding today's hearing. They want to do something to change the political narrative in this election this fall. They're exploiting the pain of these people, these children, these parents, to advance their radical interest. And I say shame on them. I say to Nancy Pelosi, stop this cynical, disgusting charade. 
Back inside the hearing room came an ominous warning from the mother of one of the Uvalde shooting victims. Somewhere out there, there is a mom listening to our testimony, thinking I can't even imagine their pain, not knowing that our reality will one day be hers, unless we act now. For now, the nation awaits an answer to when or if America's gun laws will change in any meaningful way.